Hi, this is Bob Ingersoll. He's with uh, Mindy's Mission in M Oklahoma. Mindy's Memory. Min Mindy's Memory, my apologies, in Oklahoma. Right. And you're also involved in the film Project NIM in a way, and you're here in Gainesville today. For what purpose, Bob? Well, we're here to support Carrie uh, Bagnell and Jungle Friends, another sanctuary that we're somewhat uh, uh, affiliated with, uh, Mindy's Memory and uh, Carrie and our director, Linda Barkley, uh, work together, and uh, so uh, I've come here to uh, support this uh, event and to screen Project NIM and in support of uh, Jungle Friends and, and Carrie's sanctuary and the great work she does. Excellent. And tell me, what's your connection with the film? Well, I uh, worked with Nim from about 1977 until the year he died in 2000, and uh, some people would say that I am Nim's best friend. Uh, okay, I'm and not, tell I'm, me, tell me who Nim is. Nim is a chimpanzee. Was born in Norman, Oklahoma, at the Institute for Primate Studies. He was brought to uh, Columbia University in 1973, shortly after he was born, within a few days actually, and uh, he was taught sign language by a, a group of people uh, headed by Dr. Herb Terrace at Columbia University, and it was a replication of the the study that was done with Washoe, and uh, and it was the intention was to see if a chimpanzee could learn language. And uh, that was the premise, anyway, and, uh, and that's how it started. Uh, the film, actually, is about Nim's life, not just about his time in New York, but his life from the time he was born until the day he died. And you knew Nim that whole time, didn't you? I knew Nim from the time he came back to Oklahoma in 1977. There were, there, he was born in 73, and I hadn't quite gotten to the Institute yet, but I got there around 1974 or 75, so I knew Nim from 1977 until... 2000, so almost all of his life. And you came here today to be part of this for why? Well, I, I'm here in, really to support Carrie Bagnell, who's running a, a, a sanctuary called Jungle Friends, and the, they take in uh, capuchins and squirrel monkeys and spider monkeys uh, that from pet situations and, and from researchers, from what I understand. And uh, I'm here to uh, support this event and to raise a little money for Carrie. They're, they're trying to purchase some land uh, at a that's adjacent to their sanctuary and uh, in conjunction with the film because the film actually hits on a lot of these same captivity and primate issues and and animal issues in, in themselves so uh, so it seemed like a, a, a you know uh, something that would go you know hand in hand to screen the film you know and and use it as a as a tool to help carry sanctuary can you tell me a little bit about the problem and the plight of sanctuaries in general well, yeah, there are actually a lot of problems with sanctuaries. First of all, there are not enough of them that, that, are, that are actual sanctuaries, that are actually there for the animals, that aren't there for, for some you know, personal interest or, or to make money for the humans, but to actually retire the animals. And uh, the problem is, is that we have a very hard time raising money because we're not funded by the government. And generally speaking, uh, it's very difficult to raise the kind of funds we need to, in order to do the work that we do. So we reach out to the public for the most part and and a few small organizations the Na national anti-vivisection uh, group in chicago and and several others like that that uh, have stepped in to help us but for the most part it's uh, small donors and 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 you know regular you know people from the public that just want to help and the reason that Kerry needs to expand, and, and I, I take it that the operation you're with in Oklahoma needs to expand as well, doesn't it? Absolutely. Actually, Tim, we are full. We have 100 monkeys, and we would like to have 500, but we don't have the land or the, the room or the, the staff or the funding. So, and, and all those things go hand in hand. And without that kind of you know, support, you, you, you can't take in more monkeys than you can actually pay for. And so we have to stick to a budget, and, and we have to turn away monkeys. Same thing with Carrie. I, I think that she'd like to expand. She'd like to be able to help as many more monkeys as she possibly can. But she also understands, just like I do, and Linda at uh, Linda Barkley at uh, Mindy's Memory, that that we can't we can't jeopardize the the lives and the well-being of the residents that we already have uh, in, turn, in, in in order to take more in. So we have to be fiscal. Fisc well, excuse me, fiscally responsible, and uh, that that means sometimes turning animals down, and that's hard for us because we know what's going to happen, and uh, and that's that's not really acceptable to us. But but we that's why we're here. Right. We're reaching out to the public, and hopefully they will uh, they'll be generous. So if I remember, you're trained as an evolutionary biologist. Is that right? Well, actually, I, I have a degree in. Uh, uh, 
psychology and most of my work was in evolutionary biology in, in the anthropology department. I, I consider myself a primatologist with an evolutionary biologist sort of a, a lean. So, but yeah, my, my training is in, in primatology and, and non-human primates. Do you get a lot of pushback from the scientific community in the work you're trying to do? Uh, absolutely. Uh, some of these you know, folks are friends of mine, and I've known them for 35 years, and we all started in graduate school and undergraduate school together. I just took a different path. And, 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 and it, 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 there's, you know, it's nothing personal because I, I just had the opportunity to, to take the road that I took because I didn't need to get a job in research, and I didn't have to work in academia, and I could work on behalf of the animals in in the way that I do because I didn't necessarily follow that that I need a job and I need employment and that's another problem that sanctuaries are underrepresented in the academic community they're they're not funded through the academic community so it's very difficult for somebody in academia to actually take take the path of a sanctuary job or a career in sanctuaries there are very few sanctuaries that employ uh, the kind of people that uh, that come out of uh, psychology or anthropology programs and, and they don't pay enough. You're going to be here all week with the screening of the film. What's the one message that you'd like people to take away from the movie? That captivity is the worst thing possible, especially for an animal that is wild and it, it is not domesticated. I mean, even domesticated animals, as everyone knows, shouldn't be in a box or in a cage. And I, I personally, I think that the biggest message from this film is that captivity is the enemy. And, uh, and that's, that's the worst thing that you could do to an animal is to, to put it in a box. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate your time. Sure. Thanks, Tim.